In the meantime, let's go live to Jim Chalmers and Katie Gallagher. The... So happy to see us. OK, let us know when you're good. Packed house. Everyone good? You're right up the back? OK. Uh, well, today, Katie Gallagher and I are releasing the final budget outcome for the year just finished, which shows uh, that the Albanese Labor government has delivered a second consecutive budget surplus. Uh, this is a powerful demonstration of our responsible economic management. Responsible economic management is a defining feature of the Albanese Labor government. These are the first consecutive surpluses in almost two decades. In our first year, a $22 billion surplus, which was a $100 billion turnaround. In our second year, a $15.8 billion surplus, which is a $72 billion turnaround. That $172 billion turnaround in just two years is the biggest nominal improvement in the budget in a parliamentary term ever. And it wouldn't have happened without our responsible economic management. It wouldn't have happened without our spending restraint, without our savings, and it wouldn't have happened without the way that we've taken the right economic and fiscal decisions for the right economic uh, and fiscal reasons. It's really important to recognise that this surplus is bigger at the end of the financial year than we anticipated in May, not because taxes are higher, but because spending is lower. Spending in the last financial year was much lower than anticipated at budget, and revenue was lower as well. Spending was down by almost by around twice as much uh, as revenue was down. So this bigger surplus is not because we taxed more, it's because we spent less, and that's an important thing uh, to recognise. Now, we don't see a surplus as an end in itself. Uh, these surpluses are all about fighting inflation, making room for cost of living relief, building a buffer against global economic uncertainty, and also paying down the Liberal debt that we inherited so that we pay less interest on it. Less debt and less interest. Something like $150 billion less debt, which means something like $80 billion less in interest payments on that debt. Uh, now, in addition to uh, the quite stunning progress that has been made in budget repair over our first two years, we haven't neglected those big longer-term spending pressures as well, whether it's dealing with the interest costs on the debt we inherited, whether it's reform to aged care or reform to the NDIS. Spending on NDIS will continue to grow, spending on aged care will continue to grow, but what we've been able to show is a willingness and an ability uh, to make sure that both of those grow more sustainably at the same time as we get those interest costs down. Katie and I have spoken to you on multiple occasions about the big pressures on the budget. Uh, our responsible economic management is in the near term, but also uh, in the longer term as well. I think Australians can be really proud of the progress that we've made together uh, over the course of the last couple of years, indeed uh, over the course of the last week or so. If you think about the last week, uh, only last Wednesday we got very welcome, very encouraging, very heartening numbers when it came to monthly inflation. Uh, not just headline inflation but underlying both measures uh, as well as non-tradables and services inflation all went down in welcome and encouraging ways. In the second half of last week, we restarted the strategic economic dialogue with China. It couldn't have been better timed given uh, the very welcome news out of Beijing that the Chinese government is acting to support growth and activity in the Chinese economy. Uh, you know that softness in the Chinese economy has been a big concern for us, a big part of the global economic uncertainty which plays out in our own economy as well. We saw another uh, round of weak manufacturing data just in the last uh, couple of hours or so out of China. Uh, our forecast for China over the next three years or so, if they play out as we anticipate, would be the weakest growth in China since it opened up in the late 1970s. And so progress stabilising that important relationship with China, a relationship full of complexity and economic opportunity, important developments in the last week as well.